let's try working a problem to get our mind around directions of angular velocity and angular acceleration vectors. We have a turbine here that takes 30 seconds to go from its operating angular velocity in the counterclockwise direction to a complete stop. With this function, omega is equal to the quantity t minus 30 squared over 100 that will give us units of radians per second coming out of there. We'll draw in some axes and the direction of rotation to make sure we know what's going on here. We'll call x positive to the right, y positive going up, and z is going to be coming out of the page towards us. We don't get a choice of z once we've specified x and y. We want to stick with the right-handed coordinate systems. So when you go x cross y, your z should be coming towards you. That means that the direction of the angular velocity vector is coming towards us. Or I might write this, it's coming towards us. What about acceleration though? If we're slowing down, we're turning counterclockwise, but the direction of acceleration is opposing that to slow down. So if we're curling the other way to slow down, that means our thumb is going into the screen or into the page and our angular acceleration will actually be in the negative k-hat direction or away from us. What's the average angular acceleration? To answer this, we'll use our formula for average angular acceleration. And we'll plug in the things that we know. This is final minus initial over the time of 30 seconds. We have a function here that we can evaluate at time equals zero and at time equals 30. We'll do that and get some values which we can then evaluate to get a final answer of negative 0.3 radians per second squared. Finally, let's ask what's the instantaneous angular acceleration at some different times? This means using a kinematic relationship to find angular acceleration from our angular velocity time dependent. Alpha is equal to d omega dt. And we have a function for omega in terms of t, so we'll plug that in here. We now have to take the derivative of this function. This is a nested function here where we have t minus 30 squared. So what we can do is we can take the derivative of this function, which is multiplying by two and subtracting one from the exponent to get one. So we get two times the quantity t minus 30 over 100. And then we have to take the derivative of the inside. This is a chain rule. So you do the derivative of the original thing and then times the derivative of the inside. So times the derivative of t minus 30. t, when you take the time derivative, gives you 1. And 30 is a constant, it gives you 0. Combining this all together, we end up with an angular acceleration of t minus 30 over 50 that should give us units of radians per second squared coming out. That's our function. That's not actually the final answer here because we want to evaluate it at different times. But we can plug in those times and get are three different answers. Here's our first one at time equals zero of negative 0.6 radians per second squared. Our second one at time equals 15 seconds of negative 0.3 radians per second squared. And our final one at time equals 30 seconds of zero.